Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Berlitz and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without cost you anything extra and other links, they will be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. So this week we start with Abandon All Hope by Jefferson Nevis. A Brazilian creator, thus a member of RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. It is a low prep narrative game. You can literally just grab the game, read the first page and start playing with it right away. The game can be played solo or in group and there is no character creation. The experience of playing it will make you know more about you or actually your character to be more precise and the ones around you. And well, don't let the weight of the guilt while playing it trap you in hell because then there will be no escape. Another release for this week is Beneath the Dungeon Floor by Hodag. It is a lunch and crawl adventure. Well, a dungeon crawl solo adventure that you can play during your lunch time. It is based on a 1d6 system and although it is aimed towards solo play, it also provides some rules and some rooms that you can try to expand and run it with a group. Keeping track of the small world that you build and then have this experience of having your lunch crawl with your group of friends. From UB, we have the release of Haunt, a Ratchet and Alone game and as other Ratchet and Alone games, it is a solo journaling game, but this time you are a trapped ghost who aches to connect with the living. The idea uh, is not to win per se, it is to reflect themes like isolation, fear and disconnection while creating a story and understanding the emotional toll and the emotions that said story will inspire in you. Most Ratchet and Alone games focus on the idea of surviving of the character uh, uh, and that then your character it wants to just survive up until the end of the game. Instead, here you are more focusing on the memories that you can carry from your past life. I think that it's very interesting to have this different twist of the Ratchet and Alone, which is uh, great mechanics, and that we have plenty of other games already using it as well. So check Ubi's one for seeing this great one. And if you want to try your hand on Court of the Lich Queen by Ursi Dice, you now can through its Alpha or Ashken version. It is a gemless game powered by the Apocalypse for four to six players. In it, you take the role of the representative of the Court of the Lich Queen, working together to complete rituals that will help your realms and possibly save the world. Since it is an Ashken version, it is completely unedited and untested, so bear that in mind if you check it out. Although a beta version is on the works, so that it will be a little bit more polished, but it's still not a, a fully finished and fledged game. But already with the Ashken version, you can have the idea of what the game tries to bring to you. So it's a very interesting way to try and discover new games. And you still have some time to go for the Monster Next Door Easter Bundle by Cat Elm. In it, you have the Vampire Next Door, the Werewolf Next Door, and the Chocolatier Next Door. The Monster Next Door series is a series of games inspired by Scooby-Doo, Mona the Vampire, and the amazing Gravity Falls. I am a fan of the show. The Vampire Next Door is a full game, and the, re the Werewolf Next Door and the Chocolatier next door, they are actually more of supplements or adventures for it. The game is for 3 to 7 players and aiming towards a single session of fo short form of play. So that you can just get your friends together, have one session, the whole game, and that's it. As part of the Caltrop Jam 2 that we mentioned on a previous episode, Cesar Capaco, another creator from RPG Latam, released Chaos vs Zombies. It is a cooperative tower defense game for 1-4 to four players, and as the name says, you play as Chaos, defending from zombies. It is more of a board game than actually a role-playing game, 
Uh, but still, the, uh, this rules light game can be a great way to have some fun with your friends and family, and you can certainly roleplay the cows, thus making it a roleplaying game in a way, and try to see how the cows would react against the zombies. And on gems, we bring the push gem created by the already mentioned Cesar Capaco. The gem is for people to try to create games based on the push SRD that was also mentioned here before. Games that were created before the gem launches uh, but that use the SRD can also be submitted. So if you have some game that you use push SRD to create already, you can submit it for the gem as well. And you can submit as many projects as you want. The system, the push system, is a genre agnostic and easy to hack, focusing on cooperative action packet adventures, so that you can just get SRD, try and create your game based on it. This is a great way to try and start your game creation career in a way. Besides expanding on the rules, the gem page also provides some resources that can make it easier for anyone trying to participate, so don't hesitate to check it out. On articles and threads, we start with an article by Ian Yusem and on Uncanny Spheres making a post-mortem analysis on the 2022 Zin month. It goes in a deep statistical analysis about the whole event, seeing the different platforms that, that were used fundings, which provide some information on how things went and also some pointers on how to try and approach it for next, for next year. It is not a short article, bear in mind, but it is definitely packed with interesting and important information for the indie scene. It goes in depth of what the Zin month was and what we can expect or even how creators can try and improve for next year. And a thread by Matt Sanders. This thread starts with the commonly mentioned broken character idea, but goes much deeper on analyzing in a way that is not actually the character that is broken, but rather the play or the playing experience that we're uh, aimed towards. I like how he goes on exactly asking why it is considered broken by some people and what are the reasons behind plenty of the choices, not only by said players that created the broken characters, but uh, that people that consider it as being broken as well. It, it, for me, it was a very interesting read. And for today, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like the damn video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. you can buy my games on HIO, you can check out all the other videos in the series, let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, what you are disliking about it, what you want to see here as well, and I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!